What's up guys, my name is Julian, your solar expert, and this is a whiteboard that took a lot of time to get just right. Uh, this has taken us a couple weeks to actually perfect all these numbers and verify everything, so I hope you find this helpful. So today, I'm gonna be going through all of the basic stats of a solar panel that you need to understand in order to know if the solar panel is actually good or not. I get questions all the time from people that indicate that they're just very confused about the basic concepts behind the solar panels and so I want to clear it up and help you understand so basically you don't have to just trust the salesperson and you know for yourself if it's good or bad. All right, so I have a whole list of these solar panels here and they are not exactly in order from best to worst. All of these panels I would say are pretty good but they are kind of grouped together where the top panels are more at the top and the lower end panels of the group are kind of more at the bottom. So first, before I dive into all of the individual companies here and, and the modules that I have listed, I wanna give a brief rundown of all the stats up here on the top because if you don't understand these, then we're not gonna be able to really understand why certain panels are better than others. So the STC, that stands for Standard Test Condition Rating and that is the watt rating that basically is advertised. When we talk about a panel that's 400 watts, that's gonna be the standard test condition rating, but that's not necessarily how many watts the panel's actually going to put out. It's kind of misleading actually. So there's another watt rating, the NMOT, and that is a little bit more of the real world watt rating. So in some places it'll actually, you know, perform a little bit better than what this NMOT rating is, but in general, the panel is actually gonna perform a little bit closer to this NMOT watt rating. And so that will give you a little bit of a better idea of how much power that panel can really output after it gets up on your roof in the real world environment. Okay, so when it comes to all of these stats, basically there's two stats up here that are ultimately the most important. It comes down to the degradation and the power density. So the first thing is the degradation right here. And that stat basically tells us how well the panel is going to perform over the years. So as you can see, there's kind of a couple of groups of panels here. We have the panels that are still gonna be at 92% at year 25, and then we kind of have a gap, and the next group of panels are kind of in the range of 86 to 84%. So basically, if you think about it, you have the top panels producing around 8% less power after 25 years, which is pretty amazing. And then you kind of have your, you know, we'll call this the varsity, and then you have kind of the JV panels per se, and those are gonna degrade about twice as much almost as the top tier cells that are still sub 10% degradation. And so that's the first kind of test when you're thinking about the quality of the panel. It's the longevity of the cells and not just how much power it's going to output now you know at year one but also 10 15 20 25 years down the road the second stat ultimately that to sum up all of these stats is going to come down to the power density which is how much power on a per square foot basis the solar panel is actually able to generate and provide for you because a trick that's happening in the industry is they just keep making these solar panels a larger square footage larger surface area and that's how they're getting more and more wattage out of the panels it's not necessarily that they're becoming more efficient and able to produce more power on a per square foot basis so there's kind of some trickery going on and unfortunately all the manufacturers are kind of trapped in this race to have the biggest watt rating to impress you and make you think that you know they have the best panel on the market when in reality they should be explaining that their panel is actually the most power dense and i do think that rec does a good job of actually explaining this on the spec sheet they do kind of give a per square foot or a per square meter watt output rating, which I think is super important to do. And that really is a better indicator when it's all said and done, which is a higher quality module able to output more power. So quickly, let's go through these other stats and then I'll get into kind of the use cases for all these different panels and 
if I like or dislike, you know, all these different options. Then we have efficiency. So the efficiency rating is the king of the stats that we kind of hear about. And that is the percentage of light that hits the panel that the cell and the solar panel are able to convert into electricity for you. Even though 20 to 22% seems kind of low, it's actually pretty high. So 20 to 22% is gonna be very good. You wanna have as high as possible in terms of your efficiency. These REC panels and the sun power panels are gonna be the highest in terms of your efficiency offerings. Same thing, there's gonna be kind of a trend. The panels that usually have the highest efficiency are usually gonna have like the highest degradation as well. Not always, but there's usually a correlation with high stats in one category and kind of having that across the board. So the next stat here is the temp coefficient. The temperature coefficient is going to tell us how well the panel performs as it gets hot on the roof outside of its ideal temperature range. Now, the ideal temperature range is, it's like around 44 degrees or 40 degrees Celsius. And this is more how the standard test condition rating is figured out. They have the panel in a laboratory, not too hot. Um, when it's up baking on the roof, it can be extremely hot, 150 plus degrees. So the difference between the standard test condition rating and the NMOT rating is a lot of that's going to be when the panel is more in its ideal operating temperature and when it gets hot up on your roof. And so that is the temperature coefficient. This is kind of like golf. You want to have the lowest temperature coefficient rating as possible. And in this case, the REC Alpha Series has the best temperature coefficient. Now, the next stat I have is the panel dimensions. This, this kind of gets into where some of the manufacturers are fooling you in terms of, you know, if, like maybe they have a 400 watt panel but the panel is huge versus another panel that's 400 watts, but it's relatively normal sized. So the panel dimensions are there. And then I have the power density, which I of course already explained. And the highest rated panel in terms of power density is gonna be your REC Alpha Pure. Now this is the 410 watt module. And real fast, I just want to explain because I'm sure a lot of people watching this video are gonna ask, Julian, why don't you have the 430 or that 460? 70 watt module um, that I heard REC came out with. And the reason why is because REC actually messed up the voltage. When I say messed up, they didn't make it compatible with the existing line of end phase microinverters. And for a long time, you had to use the last generation, the IQ7X. The problem with this is that that microinverter only puts out around 320 watts. And so you don't want to put a panel that's 470 or 430 watts with a microinverter that's only putting out around 320 watts because you're gonna have a lot of clipping as the, the solar panel naturally is uh, outputting and producing over 400 watts at peak and that microinverter is clipping it and preventing it from actually really producing anything more than around 315 or 320. So for this reason, because I'm such a proponent of using the Enphase microinverters because they're so reliable and resilient, so it just doesn't make sense to use a panel which is naturally going to have a lot of loss during its DC to AC conversion. It makes a lot more sense to use a panel that's like 400 or 410 10 watts and pair that with either the IQ8M or A, which can convert around 320 or up to 350 watts AC, because now you're not giving it too much to handle. And that's what's really important too, is having the right ratio between the DC to AC outputs. And so that's just my quick explanation for why the REC 430 and 470 watt panels are not on the board. And I'm actually gonna come out with a video soon that explains this more in detail. Now Enphase is coming out with the new version, the IQ8X, the labor warranty category over here is only going to be reserved for your top of the line panels and combined with a contractor, usually on some sort of preferred contractor list. You do get a labor warranty with a couple of these premium panels, REC, SunPower, and Panasonic are a couple to note. And then I do have some X factors over here or just kind of tidbits about each manufacturer. And I'm going to go over those right now as I talk about each brand in a little bit more detail and why you should use some of these different panels in different situations. All right, so starting off with REC panels. Now, I believe personally that REC is kind of the king when it comes to solar panel manufacturers. It's kind of why I put them up here at the top. Like I said, 
said not an official list in ranking order, but not the opposite really. The, the best panels are gonna be here at the top. So I've personally been selling RAC panels for about six years now. I've been extremely impressed with the quality, especially being down here in Southern California where it gets very hot in the summer. This panel has had the best temperature coefficient for years, the Alpha Series that is, and it's been an incredible panel. I've literally never had one fail either. They have a pretty much perfect record in terms of reliability and overall bang for your buck. I really do believe that if you can get your hands on these, especially if you're more in the southern part of the United States in terms of latitude, anywhere where you have really hot summers, I think that the REC is the way to go. It's hard to make an argument to kind of use anything else. And the reason why that is, is because it's not like the REC Alpha Series panel is gonna cost a fortune more than you know one of the cheaper panels on this list. When you're buying a solar project, there's so much more that goes into the total cost than just the solar panels. Like let's say for example, your system is gonna be around $30,000. Well, using an REC panel versus like a little bit of a less expensive panel, it may only add maybe 1,500 bucks, maybe $2,000 to your cost. It's not really gonna be a super significant amount. And so when you're designing one of these systems, you really are designing it for the long run and hoping that it's gonna get 25 plus years of life out of it. And so for me personally, I don't really see a reason to try to skimp on your panel quality just to save a couple bucks when in reality, it's gonna actually end up costing you more in the long run, especially if you factor in this degradation difference and you realize that the lost kilowatt hours are ultimately gonna end up costing you as that will equal a bill from your utility company that these higher quality, less degradation panels would help you prevent. And so REC, they've been around since 1996 and they actually have the most automated factory in the entire world, which helps them prevent any type of mistakes when manufacturing. And that's why they have some of the best quality panels in the entire world. Now. Panasonic, I have the 400 watt here because that's kind of what's actually available uh, in the warehouses. And so the, with Panasonic, a lot of people over the years have asked me, uh, Panasonic doesn't make solar panels anymore. So what, what are these? I heard that they shut down their factory already and, and getting out of the solar business. I heard them and LG were. Well, LG, they got out of the solar panel manufacturing business and Panasonic, they also got out of the solar panel manufacturing business, but not out of the solar industry. They decided to put all of their money as one of the big players in the industry into battery research and development because that's kind of the new frontier in terms of where we need to improve in terms of product offerings. Uh, solar panels are kind of a little bit more of a, of, a, of a mature product. We've kind of been using the same technology for decades now, but solar battery technology is more quickly changing and we're on the horizon of much better tech coming very soon. And so that's kind of where the big players are dumping their money right now. And so Panasonic basically said, hey, REC, can we use your panels and put our name on it? And in my opinion, I think it was a very good move because REC is, like I said, the best panel manufacturer in the world, in my opinion. And so I think that's a really good play as they uh, come out with their Evervolt battery that's actually pretty much coming out as, as I make this video in mid-December. All right, so Myers Burger. So Myers Burger, they have been in the industry for a long time, more as a research and development firm, um, not really as a manufacturer for solar panels, but just recently they've had a lot of their patents run out. And so they've realized, hey, if we wanna continue making money, we actually have to be in the game as far as manufacturing goes. So they're their product here is actually looking very good in terms of the specs. It definitely looks like a high-end premium panel. Just beware that if you're going for that product line, it is going to be the first year coming off of the, the manufacturing line. Um, so there could be some quality control issues or minor defective issues that takes time to actually come about and to be known. Unless you were saving a significant amount of money, I don't really see a reason to deviate from the REC or the Panasonic if it's available in your area. All right, moving down to the SunPower Maxion. So SunPower is kind of a solar brand, a solar powerhouse brand, I should say. They have some of the best marketing in the entire world for solar, but they are using Maxion to manufacture their solar panels. They're white labeling their solar panels, and they have actually just kind of had a split 
Um, Maxion is now making their own panels and kind of having a run at their own brand. And so you can basically now for the first time ever get a Sun Power panel without the Sun Power name attached to it just the Maxion name attached to it. SunPower has made a deal with First Solar. They're developing a, a, a solar panel for SunPower that's gonna be out next year in 2025. Um, but for now, um, they're still using the SunPower Maxion name through, through 2024 uh, until that new panel arrives. They kind of make it difficult to get all of the information. They don't like to prove that they're the best through their numbers. They like to kind of have creative and manipulative marketing, basically saying that they're the, the king of solar, everyone else is kind of crap, but, but not really give you all the numbers. Like for example, you can't even find the NMOT rating, which is arguably the most important number of all um, when, it, when it comes to the specs. So kind of ironic, I think, because if it were that good, they'd want to flaunt you know, the number and show you, yeah, we do have the best real world watt output rating, but they don't. So there is, a couple of question marks, unfortunately, in this row. So in my opinion, if you wanna go with SunPower, just know that you are going with a company that is still having to use, I'm kind of shifting gears here real fast. They've partnered with Enphase, which is the microinverter manufacturer that I really like, but unfortunately, SunPower, they are still using the IQ7 microinverter built into their panels, not the IQ8, which is the newest generation. And so especially if you're getting a system with a battery, you don't really want to go with sun power because the whole point in the upgrade from the iq7 to the iq8 is basically battery functionality and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage essentially if you have batteries with iq7s versus iq8 so sun power you're going to pay a lot of money for basically a company to do a lot of marketing all right so when it comes to q cells i actually think that q cells is a great company they actually have the largest market share in terms of residential solar for the whole united states a lot of contractors buy the q cells because over Overall, they're kind of the best bang for your buck, you could say. Now, they're not necessarily a super premium panel, but I would say that they're kind of the best of this JV bunch. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, they do have an 86% uh, degradation output at year 25 opposed to the others which have maybe one or two percent less and and they they are very reputable it's a german company they've been making solar panels for north of 20 years and ultimately they're a very reliable company that i personally have done a lot of work with and i'm very happy with the quality of the product so if you're looking to save a few dollars and for whatever reason the rec or the panasonic are just out of reach in terms of budget i would say that the q cells is the, the next step down, in my opinion, that you should take and that I would recommend uh, even putting on my own roof. Now, all of these panels underneath, um, starting with the Tesla. So by the way, Tesla is actually just a rebranded Q-Cell. Uh, I know that Tesla is a, a powerhouse brand, but they actually don't manufacture their own solar panels. Uh, it's gonna be a Q-Cell panel that they just rebrand. A lot of rebranding going on in the industry, it seems. but. Um, just know that Tesla, they are only offering their systems with, and this is kind of uh, for another video, I don't wanna to get too into this, but they're only offering centralized inverting systems and DC coupled batteries. So check out some of my other videos and I'm gonna explain that more in detail, but you're not getting as high of a quality system for factors other than just the panels when it comes to Tesla. But ultimately, Tesla doesn't make any panels, they're just taking the Q-cells and sticking their Tesla sticker on the back. All right, when it comes to Solaria, this is a premium California manufacturer. They're out of Fremont, actually. And Solaria has been pretty well respected in the industry for many years. And I think that it's a really good panel when it comes to shade mitigation, because what's cool about the, the Solaria panels is that each panel is cut up into multiple different independently performing sections. And so the problem with some of these lesser expensive, cheaper panels is that if you have a quarter of the panel in the shade, the whole panel might as well be in the shade. But if you have independently performing sections of each panel, that really helps as like a shadow will creep across the roof and then basically the solar panel will still be able to output like 80 or 90% 
instead of it basically being all in the shade and you know going down 70 or 80 percent all at once so you get a lot more power if you have kind of like spotty shading with the solaria now a few of the other panels like the rec they've kind of caught up with this technology but the solaria kind of was the pioneer when it came to this feature so definitely a good panel they also have what they consider and a lot of people do consider to be the most pretty panel it's the most blacked out panel you can't see any wires or anything it looks pretty much like a sleek black piece of glass basically okay moving down the list to Silfab um, so Silfab is another North American brand they actually have a factory up in Bellingham Washington and they have actually opened up another one in South Carolina or they're in the process of opening another plant in South Carolina as we speak and Silfab is another brand that you know, in my opinion, I've kind of had trouble finding the, the place for where they, they should exist in my lineup, not because they're poor quality, but be, because you can always get something that's a little bit better for not a lot more money. And so it's always been a tough sell personally to compromise on some specs in terms of performance with only saving a little bit of money, maybe literally as little as $30 to $50 a panel versus even some of these higher quality panels. And you know, if you're like within $10 of a Q-cell panel or something, it just, it's hard to justify deviating from those super proven brands. But at the end of the day, Silfab is a pretty respected, well-regarded brand. Uh, they make a high quality module. And I would say that they definitely have a good product for the market. They kind of lean on their North American made having a factory up in Washington as kind of like a, a selling point for them. So if you want to have an American made panel, some of these other ones are American made as well and I didn't mention them, but that would be a good reason to go with Silfab. Jinko is probably the best and highest quality Chinese brand. They are one of the largest manufacturers in the entire world and they've had a tier one panel status for a really long time because of how large they are and their financial stability. So if you're gonna have one of these budget panels, Jinko is another one that is on the list that you can rely on and in my opinion is a pretty good choice. But once again, why try to save just a little bit of money? Now, because of the tariffs, Jinko actually is opening up uh, another plant where they are making these solar panels. Now, a quick note, made and manufactured are not the same thing. Made technically just means assembled. Manufactured is basically when you're actually, like all the, the materials are actually being like, not just put together, but actually made from scratch. Now, none of the equipment is actually manufactured here on American soil, but because of tariffs, a lot of these companies are putting their assembly plants here on US soil so they can bypass the tariffs and save money there. So they have a plant in Jacksonville, Florida, and they have Eagle brand, which is kind of their North American brand. Um, for whatever reason, they're trying to get away from Jinko for their American customers. But overall, very respected company, very large, been around for a really long time, uh, been a global leader. Now, coming down to Longi, Longi is a company that is very large, still one of the larger Chinese manufacturers. And like Sunrun, for example, they use a lot of Longi. Um, now, if you're buying solar panels for your own project, you're probably not eyeing pretty much any of these brands, most likely. And the reason why you see a lot of these brands, and I know I'm kind of jumping the gun here and kind of going to talk about all of these at once here, but the companies that are buying these brands of panels for your project, these are mostly companies that are doing leases and power purchase agreements because they are trying to lessen their costs as much as possible and they don't really care as much about the quality of the panel that's going on your roof versus a situation where you are actually buying the system and you're hand selecting the components that you want to go on your roof. And so in my opinion, if you're buying the system, I don't really think that any of these are an amazing option. And like I said, just to reinstate my opinion before, it's because the amount of money that you're gonna save by going with one of these is so small, especially because there's so many other components that are costing you money as well, and labor and the contractors and everything, that I always like to emphasize that you're gonna eventually save more money going with one of these 
higher quality panels with less degradation. But Longi, you know, there's nothing wrong with the build quality or anything. It's just that if you look at a lot of the degradations here, you see how a lot of them are 84.8 exactly. That's probably because, and I don't have proof for this or anything, but a lot of these solar manufacturers are buying parts from the same manufacturing companies. They all have partnerships. They're not actually making everything themselves. They're buying a lot of parts and you know putting their name on it. And all of these panels that have 84.8% degradation, they're probably coming out of the same manufacturing plant somewhere and it's the same cell. So pretty much all of these companies here, even though they're different brands, you can almost think of them as the same because the cells are most likely the same at the end of the day. So Canadian Solar, they make a mediocre solar panel. They're actually more focused on commercial. They have like some giant 500, 600. I even think I saw like a 660 watt solar panel recently. And that's just a ginormous solar panel that's made for, you know, being out in the field somewhere for, on a ground mount. We have Trina. Trina is another brand that has a little bit more of a commercial emphasis. They do have some residential panels, but they haven't really done very well in terms of selling their product to contractors to sell for residential products. They They've really been more of something, like I said, that contractors or bigger organizations use to put on homes that are being sold, PPAs or leases. Mission Solar, now Mission, they're actually a Texas brand. They were, I would say, bigger a few years ago. For whatever reason, I don't really hear much about Mission Solar anymore. They are made in San Antonio, Texas, and they kind of go off the branding theme of being really tough um, because like in Texas, they have a lot of hailstorms, And so, you know, they used to have kind of these marketing videos of like a truck being driven over a Mission Solar panel and it's surviving. Um, and they are good panels in terms of build quality, but the specs are not super impressive. They do source a lot of overseas products, of course, and they're but they're made in Texas. So if you wanna go with the Texas made panel, it's a good option, but not really the most impressive panel in terms of specs. And then Aptos. So Aptos is a very, very new brand. They've only been out for a few years now. And when they first came onto the scene, they had this 440 watt panel, which was pretty ginormous, but it sold really well because that that was a few years ago when the market was less educated and they weren't very aware that you know some panels are seven feet tall versus like others that are six feet tall and with aptos the one kind of selling point that is something to be noted is that the wind rating is very good so if you're down in like florida where you're dealing with hurricanes a lot the aptos panel is actually a go-to for a lot of contractors down there but something to know about aptos and maybe this isn't quite as big of a deal for the actual homeowner maybe this is a bigger deal for the contractor dealing with companies that they're buying equipment from. But because they're a smaller company that just kind of burst onto the scene in the last few years, um, there's been periods where they haven't been able to fulfill orders and they've essentially run out of panels and their plant has just basically reached maximum capacity and they weren't able to, like I said, fulfill on product that they had already pre-sold. So they've had some issues where they've gotten behind over the years, but overall they have an Aptos DNA panel. It's kind of mediocre, but it is very well priced. So if you're trying to save a buck, the Aptos is a good option. Uh, JA, now this is a solar panel manufacturing company that I don't think anyone who's actually looking to install solar on their own home and trying to do research to figure out what solar panel they're gonna put on is landing on. And I don't think anyone really is but when it comes to buying them in bulk, I can tell you that Sunrun has a deal with JA Solar and they buy them by the thousands. Actually right now, currently on a national basis, about 60 to 65% of all Sunrun deals do have JA Solar panels coming with them. On a lot of these Sunrun quotes, they don't even tell you what solar panel they're actually putting on your house. They're very vague, very almost manipulative in how little information they give you. So J Jaw Solar, does have some better panels, but I guarantee you that if you're getting a quote with JA Solar, um, you're, you're not getting their highest quality solar panel. Sunrun's not doing you a favor by buying the newest best panel. Um, you're gonna get probably some something that's left over and they could get for really inexpensive. So not to talk too negatively on that, but um, that's kind of just the truth of the matter. The best suppliers that are selling equipment to the best contractors, they're not pushing the jaw solar panels. 
All right, I hope you found this video helpful. Do not hesitate to give me a call. 760-473-5878 is my direct line. Call or text me. You can also email me if you prefer that, juliansolarguide at gmail.com. And if you wanna skip the process completely and just get started with the consultation, you can click on the link in the description below and just fill out the form there and we'll give you a call back and get started as soon as possible. I cover about 25 states overall and have a team of professionals scattered all around the country that are experts in their local markets. I want to provide the highest quality of consultation as possible. So reach out and I look forward to helping you out.